Welcome everyone. Welcome to another episode of a Blue Abroad Show. I've got a very special guest today in my inaugural AFLW interview. So Brooke, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Much and appreciate, appreciate your time. You've driven a fair while away to get here just <laughs> yeah. for the interview. Yeah, down on the peninsula. So yeah. Yeah, fair, fair hike from there, but that's all right. For sure. Well, first of all, congratulations on not only the win and your first game, but I think probably the last six months getting drafted and obviously achieving the dream. Is it as much of a whirlwind for you as what it looks like on the outside? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. probably even more so. It's it's absolutely it's crazy, um, especially the first few months of preseason. It's just nuts, but um, it's so exciting and um, keen for the rest of the season. Has it settled down at all? Like, obviously, it's it's obviously you've just played your first game, so I can imagine emotions <laughs> are running pretty high there, and you've got to get over that and let that subside. But has it settled down at all for you and is it a bit of a routine now? Um, yeah, definitely yeah. got into a bit of a routine at the start. It was kind of overwhelming, um, the travel, but um, you soon get used to it. So, yeah, yeah, it's been good. Love it. We've got a few things in common. School captains, <laughs> basketball players, although I didn't ref. Um, <laughs> but I, I took note of a quote that you made just before you got drafted. And it was about goal setting and how initially you didn't want to put a... Um, sort of a certain date on a certain goal you want to achieve. It was yeah. more so just trust the hard work. Talk to me about that mindset shift because I guess the narrative usually is write your goals down, put a date. So yeah. and you've sort of gone to the reverse of that. So talk to me about the process of getting to that mindset and how it worked for you. Yeah, well, um, season 2018 wasn't the best season for me. Yep. It was um, pretty downhill and a very few ups. So... Um, I decided in 2019 just to have a complete uh, mindset shift and that started with you know not writing down my goals rather just following the process and enjoying the process rather rather than the outcome and it made me enjoy football a lot more and um, made me relax and obviously perform better on field so it it clearly worked and um, yeah I've taken it into this season and it's also it's worked for me and yeah that's what counts I guess. Yeah no I, I remember going into year 12 and there was obviously a certain score I needed to get to get into the course. And, yeah. But I remember doing the same thing, sort of saying to myself, listen, as long as you put in the hard work every day, I wanted to basically get to enter score day yeah, or yeah. ATAR score day as it's called now, knowing that no matter what score I got, I was happy with the work I put in. So I, exactly. I, I, took, I took a little bit from that. Um, but yeah, so let's touch on a little bit of basketball as well. <laughs> we spoke about it off camera. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about your upbringing there and, and how it relates, I guess, to what you do now. Yeah, so I started playing basketball from a, like since I, whenever I could in under like nines or tens or something. And um, I didn't play rep until under 16s when I finally got my confidence up. But um, I think I got my confidence through footy, um, being able to, I guess, play with the boys and having that confidence kind of filtered into basketball. I was able to try out for rep and um, played that through to under 18s. And, yeah, no. Friday yeah. night travel. Yeah. 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 Oh. So you have to make a choice at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Shout out to the mums and dads out there <laughs> driving to God knows where. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Whittlesea, so driving to Dandenong to play up that way yeah, or yeah. up to the peninsula. Um, yeah, no, fond memories. And then you've got like the 11.30 p.m. Macca's yeah. runs <laughs> after a game. Yeah. It was good absolutely. times. Absolutely. It was. It actually was super fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I missed the inaugural AFLW season. I was, I was living overseas and uh, that same year my sister played her first season of footy and oh, yeah. for us growing up, I mean, it, it just wasn't a thing. No. So obviously it's a pretty, I mean, I came to my first game to watch you girls play uh, in round two yeah. and I came with Steph, my sister, and I, I found it to be just, just a different layer of life that we didn't know existed. While you're here and while you're experiencing it all, do you feel the gravity of what's happening like you're really setting the foundation for you know the decades ahead yeah I definitely I do reflect on that quite a bit because um I think about you, you think back to the men's players who were playing at this time a hundred years ago you know they they were setting foundations and people are still remembering those players and to be a part of something that people may remember um, in a hundred years is, is pretty special so yeah. yeah I mean to be I mean you see you see historians now Looking yeah. back at our team of the century, back you know from the early 1900s, yeah, for example, yeah. and those premiership players, and I guess even at, in in high school when you have those honour boards, like, I guess to have your your name matched as a you know the first female premiership player for the yeah. Carlton Football Club, or you know one of the first, um, does that motivate you? Do you talk about that internally, or is is that just something you just sort of know subconsciously? Yeah, look, sometimes I do think about it and how cool it would be to 
you know, win those accolades and whatnot. But um, just being here is such an achievement and um, yeah. achievement not just for me, but for all the girls that are going to come through the system uh, behind me. So, yeah. 100%. Let's step away from footy. <laughs> um, you've done a bit of travel. Yeah. I saw you went to India. Yeah. Sure. Talk to me about that and talk to me about the course because it's fascinating. Yeah, so in um, year 11, I got the opportunity to travel with my school um, uh, with World Challenge to go overseas and um, help um, a community in um, a developing countries like India. Yep. Um, and we were lucky enough to be put um, helping a small um, kind of youth group of kids who uh, don't actually have the space at home to do their homework and study. So um, a man, he set up this program for kids to come to his kind of little building and space oh, right. and we helped build toilets and teach them about hygiene and he was really actually big on um, equality mm -hmm. and you know all the girls um, that come to this little space he wanted them to be able to be doctors and do whatever they want to be yep. whereas um, you know in India uh, a lot of the boys are actually actually just encouraged to do that yep. so um, it was great to be able to influence them and teach them what we do in Australia and um, yeah it was an amazing experience and we got to hike and travel as part of that as well. So I bet. Was sick. I th how, so how long was that for? Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine you come back and like everything here is so clean. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's as close as you're going to get. Yeah, yeah. Um, no. And unfortunately, not everyone does the traveling, especially to those those regions of the world where things are a little bit more tough. So I, I think that's probably set you up, and I'm sure you feel that as well. Yeah. That's really set you up. Um, you know, for the future because when I mean, you've just turned 18, obviously you're, you're 10 days younger than my little brother, which is crazy. <laughs> um, so you're going to enter, you know, this new realm of the the real world as we call it. Yeah, um, yeah. So to have that experience behind you at that young age, I think I think it's fantastic. Absolutely, it was. It was it was amazing, especially um, that year. Obviously, wasn't the best footy wise, yeah. and to go on and have a trip like that, it just kind of really. Um, reinforce in my mind that footy isn't everything you know there's bigger yeah. issues going on in society and um it really you know gave me a different mindset it puts things into perspective Absolutely doesn't it, it does. yeah what are some of the things sort of off field that you're looking to achieve uh, at the moment or again is that not something you're looking too far ahead are you just embracing the moment um yeah look i am just embracing the moment i yeah. don't really know what i i, I want yeah. to do next year in the and future. you're not meant to oh, yeah, you know you're yeah. not meant to yeah no yeah. i kind of got out of high school and um realized that i actually didn't know what i want to do and that's yeah. okay um i'm gonna have a year to decide what i want to do and yeah uh, if it takes two years, then it takes two years. That's totally yeah. fine by me. That's probably the, I guess, the advice I would pass on to you. At 18, I was just so in such a rush to figure out what am I going to do for the yeah. rest of my life, and I guess whether it's society's pressures, yeah, you know, yeah. living in a very westernised culture that we do here, and it's like, oh, you got to get a job, and yeah. oh, you got to get married, it's time to get a house. So yeah. you sort of have those pressures, but um, yeah, that's probably the one thing I would tell myself at 18 is just just chill out yeah, it's all nice. going to be okay <laughs> You're only 18, um, yeah. taste things figure out what you like because i'm sure you know the person you'll be in three years let alone yeah. 10 will be will be different yeah yeah um do you watch many athletes from other sports and draw inspiration from them um well actually i like now playing with chloe dalton i did um when the rugby sevens were going through the, all the olympics like, yeah i did follow her really like a lot um so those girls as well as the soccer like the Matildas um, I follow them a lot um, some of the iron men and women I follow um, yeah I, I like to kind of watch a lot of like a whole range of sports and um, really follow those athletes especially the women um, to give them support um, I yeah think it's great. for sure yeah, for sure yeah. yeah it's just so exciting I mean we're, yeah. we're in a whole new realm now yeah um, and Australia you know in my experience has been you know quite conservative and to you know have something change it takes a little bit of time yeah but to be pioneers in I guess not only the footy industry but the sporting industry yeah no, I think it's really exciting. exciting and obviously you're in that real sweet spot now yeah um, because I mean you're not you're not absolutely full-time yet and I, I think that's kind of cool as well yeah because you get that other side of the absolutely. world yeah I, I find I mean like I said I've only been to one game I've been to a, you know a few sessions here but you know the the women are it, it has more of a local feel yeah yeah in We're a thinking. club like ours which is traditionally pretty big and um, pretty prestigious to have that local feel yeah, uh, no, I think great. it's because that's probably something that 
gets criticised for footy. You know, it's yeah. a bit commercialised. It's you know we're trying to tackle global issues with the game. Can we just keep it local? So I think we bring that flavour back. Yeah, Do you absolutely. feel that? No, I hundred percent feel that. It's so, it's good. Um, like so, you get so many people just from all walks of life, of life with so many different job types and some cross coders, and they all come together and. Um, they're just so authentic and you can see it out in the field and in interviews post-match like it's just it's great awesome well listen thank you so much for your time no that's all really right. appreciate it hope you have a good training session yeah. the weather looks like it's going to hold up pretty well for you yeah and <laughs> uh do. yeah we'll see you next time nah, we'll check in with you at some you so other much. point no nah, thank you really appreciate it awesome